This video is part of a four-part series showcasing four use case tutorials for how to leverage all of the powerful features of the XFIS Performance Flow Visual. In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to leverage hierarchical data for employees within an organization. The video will cover topics such as incorporating names, titles, and images, configurations for KPIs and variances, adding spark lines for trends, conditional formatting, creating links between nodes, which can also be called swim lanes, creating subtree pages. To start the tutorial, we'll come to the table Start tab down here and go ahead and open up the Visualizations and Data tab to explore the data a little bit. So the typical organizational data that you might work with would often have a mixture of parent and employee IDs, as well as the title and name. And below in the Values section is a mixture of various attributes related to that employee. And as we'll see in a little bit, all of the link columns below can actually be used to leverage a lot of those links or swim lanes between the various nodes of the hierarchy. Plus, if you have any date information, such as salaries by month and year, that can also be incorporated into those Spark trend lines within the performance flow visual. Let's go ahead and get started and build this out. I have a tab down here at the bottom for org chart start, and this is what it will look like if you open up a new copy of that visual on a report page and add all the fields accordingly. So the hierarchy field, which is where you'll add the employee IDs themselves, any parent IDs that are associated with, the spark line will become our month and year. All of the values related to the information we'd want to compare, such as current and prior year salary. Additionally, also the performance score. Additional attribute fields related to the employee information. And then things that you might want to include in a tooltip can also be included down at the bottom. The first thing we're going to do is map out some of the fields into the visual to get some of the images and other things to start to show up, including all of the link items that we have between destination, direction, type, and color. These all will determine what additional links are created besides the standard parent and child linkage that will be included as part of the native hierarchy. And documentation on what valid fields can be included in here can be found on the Performance Flow Visual documentation website. So we'll come up to the upper left and select Map Fields. We can observe that title and name have already been included in title and subtitle. If you'd like, you do have the configurations to swap them out. This just determines what will be listed over on the left versus the right. Now, if we scroll down a little bit to image, we'll take the photo, add it into the image section in here. Just to observe these changes, let's go ahead and click Submit, and we can now see the image showing up here at the top. Now, this is using the default template. If desired, you do have other template options that can be used. But for this tutorial, we'll go ahead and leverage the default executive template. Close back out of this and come back to the map fields option. We're going to close the node detail, open up the links, and we're going to take the link destination that goes to link two, link direction will go into link direction, and link type will go into link style type. And last but not least, the color will go into the color section here. Observe all of the new links that will show up once I click submit. This was one of the links that was automatically added as part of that configuration where there is a connection between Lexley and Janae that does not exist as part of the native parent ID to employee ID hierarchy, but is shown as a relationship between the two of them. Now, if we come back to table start, we can observe what that data would look like, where we can see that Lexi has a destination to employee number three, which is Janae, who has an employee ID of three. So that link destination, as long as it has the same ID as part of the ID node, will allow those two to connect with a link direction of both and then a link color of this hex code, which will translate automatically in to the arrows going in both directions with the color and assignments between them. Additionally, you can click on any of these links to make additional changes between the link appearance, the direction, or the link type. If you clicked on appearance, you would get additional options for each one of these in turn that gives you additional settings that can override whatever was coming out of the model initially. You also have the ability to add custom links not coming from the model between any of the nodes. To do so, we're going to come up to the link section here, select add link, and I'm going to add another link between Janae and Alaya. And a new link is added here with the same options for link appearance, link direction, and link type. Additionally, for any of these links, you can come up to the manage link section. And from this menu, you also have the ability to add from the menu in here where you can search for an employee name or the from and to be able to add it into here or to manage any of these that exist as a custom link as well. Closing out of this, and let's go ahead and remove the additional custom link. You can also observe on the cards that there is a base and comparative value, plus also the tooltip items show all of this information and more, both everything that we had 
in the values that are displaying in the visual, but also those two items that were added to our tooltip well over on the right. Now these can be configured up in the KPI and variance sections as well for what will be displayed on the card. So if we select KPI, this would be the top value. So would we wanna show current salary or prior year salary? As example, if we switched prior year, then that becomes the variance which would compare to current year and it flips them around instead. So you can decide between what your main data label display would be here and then whatever the variance would be below as well. Additionally, for the sparkling, if you come over here, you have an option for measure selection to choose what to include in that sparkline. Current salary and prior salary are included there as well as their performance score. You can turn any one of these on or off as a developer, but also the end users, depending on how the reader mode is configured, will have choices to reconfigure these cards as well based off of their design and personal preferences. And if you come over to chart type, we are given a few options between some standard line charts, some step charts, a few versions of an area chart, as well as some columns, win loss, or baseline charts. We can select baseline chart to see another example and go ahead and close back out of this menu. In addition to choosing the chart type, we have a few other options as well. Scale is an important one because that determines whether or not the scale is based off of the individual employee or based off of a universal scale, or their salaries would compare against each other. Plus some additional formatting options of what to do with a null display, marker, label, and other formatting options below. Additionally, besides the automatic conditional formatting that you can see being applied to the variances for red if it's negative and green if it's positive, you can add your own conditional formatting to any of the elements inside of the cards by coming up to the conditional formatting option here. And notice, by the way, the similarities to the conditional formatting setup that you'd find in InfraRiver that is shared across all of the XVIZ and Lumo visuals. So we're gonna select add a new rule. We we're gonna call this low performer to compare against performance evaluation results. And down in the rule set, we'll select if the performance score is less than 1200, select apply natively, you'll see that you get a border that will represent all of these outliers for the conditional formatting that's been applied. And you do have the choice between rules or color scale. Additionally, if you come down here, you can see the color impact can be for the border, the node, the font, or all of them. If I was to select all, just to give you an example of what that would look like and select apply, you can see all of the colors being changed, including the background, the border, and the font, or you can specify just one of them. I will go ahead and keep out everything except for the border and select that to apply to. And then coming down to the border applied to, you can see that it can be specified to all sides, the top, right, bottom, or left. If we wanted to keep this just on the top and select apply again, it will get a callout card just above it as a little bit of advanced formatting. Closing out of the conditional formatting tab, if we take a look over in the left on the legend, we can see the low performer conditional formatting has already been applied, plus all of the connector labels as well from any of the connectors that were automatically created utilizing any of the link columns. Additionally, they can also be renamed by selecting the edit icon. Let's go ahead and rename these based off of the organizational relationship types. Easily said and done, close out of this, and we can actually observe where the temporary projects exist. Notice that the children are being listed below here for each of the levels below. If we expand these out, we will see as we continue to move our way down, we find the relationship between the other two individuals that's showcasing the temporary projects link. Additionally, if we come up to display and move over to navigation, we have an option for node count of either immediate or all. Immediate will show you the count of individuals or IDs below that top level, and then all of them will show everything below that. If I change it to all, come back out of here and close down some of these levels, notice that that goes to three, but if I close technical director, that now shows seven, which is all the children at any level below that technical director position. And for very large organizations with a lot of levels or individual employees or IDs within their org, you do have the option to create subviews that automatically let you move between those. Let's go ahead and come back to the top node, create one of these ourselves, come back up to this section, expand it to all of the levels available, and for any one of these individuals, we have an option to click the ellipses to set as a top level, which will create a new tab at the bottom. I'm going to set a new one for Alaya over here, select the ellipses, select set as top level, and notice now that we have a manager tab that's added here at the bottom to create a new subtree specifically from her perspective that is easily and quickly navigated to and from using this navigator menu.